Hello guys, Zenger Rollpair here. And I'd like to show you the build that I will be playing in uh, season seven. This is, I will be playing Crusader in season seven. It is kind of a build in the shadows. It's not popular, uh, and I don't know why it's not popular. Actually, this build is impressively strong and it works well. And it has been buffed on PTR as well. Mm. And uh, I made some research and uh, found out that this uh, build uh, has been invented by some Chinese players, but uh, it hasn't made it uh, to US or to European region. I don't know why everyone is over obsessed with the Legacy of Nightmares bombs. But with the high paragon augments and a good gear, that build actually did a hundred and two. Uh, on console by a legit console player, but no one plays this on PC. I haven't found even a couple of players that uses that, and uh, it's pretty strange. It's pretty strange, guys. I don't know why. Uh, so I'll show you the build then, um, and uh, we'll see. Then I will show you in detail how this works. I guess we'll go on a 76. The build works really good in density. Absolutely great. Proper skills and go so provide some nice toughness. Problem is fighting lonely leads when there's no area damage though. That's the problem. Not many mobs and uh, not many procs of Akarat's Awakening, you know, many blocks, so you just don't reset your skills so often, that's a problem. So, it's absolutely, she should not fight tiny packs, like uh, that, that is the least that were there. Always, always fight density. Need density for this build to work. Like this one. See this thing that just melt, absolutely fucking melt. And my gear is fucking terrible, so there should be much better gear than this one. Area damage works really great with this build. When there's density, you reset your skills really quickly. And it instantly becomes more effective. Instantly. On. Now I need some elite. Nice. We'll see how, how fast the elite will melt in density, guys. Die boys, die boys, you die too, okay, oh here's another one, what is this, 
That's a nice one. I killed all the minions, now it gets slower. Now it gets slower, come on. Oh, there's no one here, okay. I have to kill this one. You die already, please. Go. What is this? The power, nice, nice. I like the power. <laughs> I don't like when there's no mobs to kill. In density, come on. Give me some elite, please. Oh, I wasted the power for nothing, absolutely. Let's bring... Come on, guys. Come here. <coughs> Come to density. Come to density, guys. Coming. You guys are coming or what? Fucking idiots. Generating density is quite problematical. What is this speed? Oh, that's awesome. Not sure if I'm gonna fight this. Let's see. Oh, bad shit. That, that's really bad. I won't fight this. They are knockbacks. Now oh, this is much better. City, but nice come on guys jump on me all of you Frozen. Come on. Come here. Come here, man. Come here. Come here. Oh, fucking instantly give you. Son of a bitch. Everyone, 
Come on guys, jump on me you motherfuckers. Yeah baby, come on! Come on, you see that? The scaling with uh, the area damage and the density is really nice. Insta instantly, instantly kills everything here. What is this? Shield, okay. Okay, nothing here. Absolutely nothing. Well, come on. This is sh this is frozen, but I don't care. it come on give me density come on come here guys come here Almost there. As you can see, this build performs really well, and the more density you have, the scale, the scaling, just instantly becomes better. I'll see how fast I can kill this bitch. Running from me, I don't like this. This is one of the most terrible type of mobs that run away. This is how it works guys, this is how it works. Now I'll explain you the build and what's the difference with the other builds and so on. So this build is 5 piece account set with the two piece in work is set and uh, of course you need torrents everywhere this is a torrents build guys this is pretty much looks like in workers but it only has two piece in workers instead of six piece in workers and it is combined with five uh, piece account set that now deals uh, 600 increased damage and also gives a tiny 15% uh, damage reduction now the set so we got slightly better than uh, it's in life now uh, it's been buffed by a little it's not enough but uh, 
with this build it performs uh, decently so you need uh, you need your typical turns rules like life beat uh, strength turns secondary everywhere everywhere turns guys as you can see my gear is pretty shitty I don't have ancients uh, and this one is terrible this one is shit this is shit uh, non ancient this is really bad this one is also bad so there's a lot of uh, a lot of you know way to improve uh, my gear and uh, to push this build better as for the rings it's and uh, it's the endless walk of course the compass rose and uh, the travel splash the travel splash you would like to have physical damage here strength and beat or strength and attack speed or CDR with the torns if possible the compass rose this one is pretty nice strength beat attack speed and CDR uh, the pen strength beat and also all rest would be great here these boots are nice but they are not ancient that's the only disadvantage as for the belt the belt one of the best uh, options that you may have is stringo wheels guys stringo wheels is extremely good in this build it also it gives uh, damage reduction and uh, if you get this uh, dream turns roll you are just fucking you are just you know, fucking done and uh, it's, it's the best belt you can get over this build. If you don't have string of ears, uh, you don't have string of ears, you can get the CDR belt guys, that's absolutely possible. The Vigilant belt can be used here for an excess CDR. Oh, maybe, maybe uh, you can use uh, Witching Hour. Uh, for increased attack speed and you should roll off critical hit damage for all res or something else for the armor it's also a cool option actually but 30% uh, uh, reduced damage from melee attacks is incredibly important for the gloves or the better the best option is the pride of the invokers because the invoker's gloves also always roll with uh, the torn's damage. An ideal roll will be attack speed and CDR here. Attack speed and CDR. And attack speed, CDR and area damage is absolutely like fucking super dream roll. The shackles of the invoker is the only bracers you will need for this build. This is pretty nice, nice build guys. That's way late the moment my webcam is fucking unplugged. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm sorry my webcam is fucking unplugged. So uh yeah, the shackles of the walker is the best uh, braces that you may get for this build. You, this is the ideal role: physical skill damage, strength beat, and life per hit. Life per hit is very important to uh, have your recovery up, and because uh, you will be on kind of a low recovery in this build. Uh, as for the second ring, it's just as land and it uh, gives you damage reduction based on your block chance. And my block chance is at uh, 71, yes, 71. And when I attack with a partner celerity, I get up to, I get up to 86 uh, block chance. And with this ring, I get, uh, I get, uh, I get. 40 43 percent damage reduction <laughs> yeah that would be the good roll for this ring uh attack speed and cdr you know cdr could be bad and chance block is extremely important as well because the damage reduction scales with your block chance absolutely as for the weapon uh i got this hack with it attack speed and cdr <laughs> 
Uh, this is one of the best weapons to use with this build. You know, I don't need ancient, it doesn't really matter. Uh, as for the shield, I use Watoya Spiker with the Provoke skill. And it basically doubles your turn's damage. And it's really visible, you know, when you provoke the mobs and they come to you, instantly deal uh, double turn's damage. I know it's kind of his shady mechanics that uh, it's not the turns them that you apply, but the turns, uh, but it scales the turns damage that is kind of reflected to your enemies when you, they attack you. But that works. Uh, that works. Uh, it's visibly, you know, you can see how it works. <laughs> As for the cube, guys. Uh, for the cube we have um, we have Akrat's Awakening, the best shield possible for this build is extremely important and uh, every successful block uh, reduces all our cooldowns for one second. That's why we need to jump right in, uh, into the fray, into density with many mobs attacking us and it's uh, absolutely resists all our cooldowns then we can press our Iron Skin and uh, Akrat's Champion and all that shit. And we are pretty much invincible there with unlimited accurate champion. On the armor we have Achilles Kuros. We don't have the spenders here, we don't have uh, anything that spans our wrath. So we always above 90% primary resource and all is reduced damage by 50%. The ring of Rowing Grando is there to allowing us to use two piece invokers. That's the only reason why it's there, guys. The only reason why it's there. As for the options, for the options of this build, uh, now there's still an argument between crusaders, like what uh, what weapons is bad? Is hack better than big sticker? If you don't have hack or you have a fucking silly big sticker, like maybe this one, guys. You can use this setup uh, with the Pig Sticker and Accurate's Awakening and you can also switch to Blood Brother here or the Furnace. Or the Furnace guys. These are the two options they have. Blood Brother instantly raises your block chance for 20% and you are pretty much maxed out. You get 83 here. Uh, with uh, the basic no black block chance that you have on gear and when you attack with the punish you get you cap your black chance and you get 50% damage reduction you know flat that's extremely good and with blood rather blood brother you are pretty much inflict 30% damage all the time increase 30% damage all the time because you're blocking all the time and the more density you have the better uh, the blood brother works so, if, uh, a lot of people say that uh, Peak Sticker with the really good Accurate's Awakening uh, and Blood Brother that works better than uh, Hack, uh, the Spiker and, uh, and the Accurate's Awakening here, guys. That's, that's still uh, undetermined, like what's better. One people say this, and other people say that, so uh, it's, still, it's still undecided on what's better. It's only also interesting option to use Salvation here. Now Salvation heals you for 30% of the amount of blocks, uh, of the amount of blocks, and that's a pretty cool source of healing. But now losing uh, Kurt's Awakening of Toy Spiker can uh, uh, drop your DPS significantly and, uh, and you sh still should be using Kurt's Awakening here at all costs, using Kurt's Awakening here always. If you use Kurt's Awakening here, you know, Provoke doesn't uh, really need it anymore. Uh, so you need to cap your block chance with the Blood Brother and here Instead of provoke, uh, you should use you should use consecration better than nails, guys. This is this is a good skill. Uh, 
interchangeable with provoke. Now for the skills guys, I will tell you what skills should you use. The Punish Celerity is the default skill that increases your block chance and increases attack speed. And since uh, we are applying turns with every uh, our attack, it's extremely important uh, to have this Punish Celerity skill here guys. It's the best out of all. No slash uh, guard guard is pretty nice. Slash zeal is pretty decent, but this skill is so so much better than everything else. It's hard to drop. Accuracy waking profit for more armor and second life is extremely important, guys. It's extremely important. You know. We always refresh our current champion, and the uh, first time we take fatal damage while our current champion is active, we'll be returned to full health. So the second life all the time, guys. Still charge generous for mobility. Uh, it's also a good option to use drunk water to to generate more density and to drag enemies. But I prefer mobility more. Iron skin reflecting scheme for increasing our turns. Nothing special here. Now. For the defensive skills, I prefer Laws of Justice Decaying Strength, it's, it's fucking invaluable damage reduction skills, guys, it's fucking invaluable. It's one of the best damage reduction skills, you know, when a mob attack you, it uh, reduces your its damage by 15%, then 30%, and it scales up to 60% damage reduction uh, of mobs. So basically, it's like hand respect position somewhat. Uh, it's like endless hand respect position <laughs> for your crusader. Another good option here will be used to uh, to use laws of Whaler Invincible. It gives uh, some nice attack speed increase, nice attack speed increase all the time, and it also provides you life per hit for twenty almost 22k you know when you have a lot of toughness and you don't really die you have like a 2500 paragon with a ton of armor and you pretty much can tank damage uh, in your need recovery this is a good option here to use uh, Laws of Valor Invincible instead of Laws of Justice Decaying Strength but I run with Decaying Strength for now and it's fucking invaluable for me. And the last skill that I use is Provoke Cleans, guys. It's kind of under, under uh, uh, you know, underestimated, uh, underestimated rune, because it gives us 1k additional life on hit for 5 seconds. Why does it mean that when we have like 20 mobs around us, huge density, we get up to 20k uh, it should have got more at 25k of additional life per hit when there's a fucking ton of mobs around me and uh, I don't really need I don't really need uh, you know hit me because uh, I almost cap uh, my block chance with the uh, celerity so it just does nothing for me if I get 50% critical block chance I I get uh, damage reduction by after 5% or something like that it's just fucking useless pretty much so cleans that gives me a more recovery than all these runes another good rune to use there is too scared to run it's kind of a cc rune it reduces the mobs movement slow them down and uh, the attacks uh, you know, kind of hit like wet noodles and uh, that's a good solid uh, skill as well but uh, I prefer recovery here just works good for me. As for the passives, guys, hold your ground. Block chance increases our passive block chance by 30%, and we don't need dodge. We actually need mobs to punch us in the fucking face. Finally, for more strength and uh, turns scales with strength with strength directly. The more strength we have, the more turns we have, guys. Fervor of to reduce all our cooldowns, that's super important here to reduce all our cooldown cooldowns. In Iron Maiden for an, it is increases our tones by 30%. Also scales will be hit when the mobs hit us. Uh, what else guys? The gems. I use all diamonds everywhere. 
all diamonds everywhere but if you don't really die often uh, you can use some strength gems here, strength gems here, good. As for the legendary gems, uh, of course it's Boyarski chips for Torn's damage, it's a bait on the trap for uh, just flat rate and multiply damage increase and the bane of the stricken to kill Reef Garden. Without the bane of the stricken uh, it's uh, impossible to kill Reef Garden so don't even try running anything else. Guys, Portoya Spiker is, is really important for this build and uh, you should your role should be like this Strength with chance to block and CDR with the Torn second. What's good about this shield It's always rolls with Torns and Accurate's Awaiting can absolutely roll without Torns and it's very problematical to get one with Torns and uh, no, I had to roll turns here and I don't have CDR on uh, the shield, it's pretty bad. It, I, I use it for the Legacy of Nightmares build and for Invokers, but it's not, it's not uh, unfortunately as good as this one. So, this is the build guys and like I said, this, re uh, this build did a hundred great read on console. I don't know why no one plays it on uh, PC. Uh, like I said, I have no idea why it is so everyone is so obsessed with the fucking Legacy of Nightmares. No, Legacy of Nightmares is not easy to gear for. Yeah, it does some silly damage, but this build I did the 76 with, uh, you know what, with over it was almost three minutes to spare, and uh, I have absolutely shitty gear. No augments here, absolutely zero, zero augments here. My paragon is pretty low. See, so this build has a lot of potential, and with the with a huge density, it just performs insanely good, guys. Trust me. When you have like twenty and buried on you, you just fucking smash and destroy things. And you will be five minutes ahead of timer uh, with this build, so it has a lot of potential, and I hope uh, people will play it in season seven. Uh, no, th those brave ones who will play Crusader like me. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope I explained everything here. Uh, if you have any questions, just ask. And I wanted to add that I'm also on Twitter now, so. Uh, subscribe to my Twitter if you want I will be you now as putting uh, my video links there and the small updates and keep you up to date thanks for watching guys see you soon and bye